Hey everybody, it's Bruce here with Traveling with Bruce. Welcome to my channel. Today's video is all about scrapping cruise ships. So oh, I hate them making this video. It's uh, there's some sad pictures coming up here, but you know all cruise ships have a life, and uh, sooner or later, you know it's time to change them in. By the way, thank you for subscribing to my channel, Traveling with Bruce, giving my videos thumbs up. So really appreciate it. I love getting your comments. Keep them coming, folks. Thank you for joining me on my Facebook group page and Instagram. And those of you, uh, thank you, a special thank you to those of you who are joining my sponsor member group. There are a bunch of you who are becoming sponsor members of this channel. And by doing so, you can join me Monday nights at 7 o'clock for an exclusive sponsor member only live show where we hang out you can ask me anything about my channel or what's going on it's great we are having a lot of fun there eight o'clock monday we have our regular live show for the entire channel so consider becoming a sponsor member i would love that and thank you for supporting my red bubble store these links are down below let's talk about the scrapping of cruise ships this week uh, the news came out and photos started to arrive about the two Pullman Tour cruise ships, two of the three that are being scrapped, the uh, Pullman Tour Monarch that you see right here, and the Pullman Tour Sovereign. Now, these were formerly Royal Caribbean ships. Here's a shot from the bridge as the uh, Monarch was being rammed into the land there. She was being beached at about, I don't know, five or ten knots. I'm not sure, not that fast. But they beached her, and uh, the next day they did the same thing to the uh, Pullman Tour Sovereign. It used to be known as the Sovereign of the Seas. There she is right there. The Sovereign is now on land, and here is the um, Monarch next to her. So these two twin ships, the first two modern super cruise lines, super liner cruise lines, are going to be scrapped uh, one beside the other. And uh, it's an it's a end of an era. What can I say? Talking about the end of an era... This one, this ship right here, the Norwegian Cruise Line SS Norway, this was a huge blow to a lot of uh, cruise fans out there. Now, this ship began as the SS France back in 1960. And uh, I believe it was launched May 1960. She, she sailed uh, as the SS France until October 1974. And she was laid up for a while, and by 1979, she was brought back by Norwegian Cruise Lines as the SS Norway. And she sailed from uh, 1979 80 until uh, 2005 or so. And uh, a lot of passengers uh, experienced this ship for the first time as Norwegian passengers. The uh, ship was 1,035 feet long, 110 feet wide. And in 1961, when she first started sailing, she had 12 decks. By 1980, after uh, Norwegian did some remodeling on her, she had 13 decks. And by 1990, when Norwegian spent a bunch of extra money on her, she had 15 decks. The top two that you can probably see right there. Um, in 1961, she could hold um, uh, 407 first-class tourists and 1,637 second-class or tourist-class tourists. From 80 to 90, they had 1,944 people on board. And from 94 to 2003, 2,565 passengers, the largest cruise ship in the world at the time. And the cruise size went from 1,253 originally down to 875 right at the end. Um, these are shots here of her uh, scrapping. They cut her nose off. And you can now visit the, uh, the actual absolute bow of this ship in Paris uh, on display at the Paris Yacht Marina. What a history that ship had. This one here, the Costa Concordia. This one made the headlines for a long time. Built in 2006, Costa Concordia was a carnival property. She uh, went down on uh, January, the, January 2012. She hit some rocks just off an island in Italy, and she ended up on her side and uh, was a wreck. Uh, 3,229 passengers were on board the ship. 1,023 crew were on board the ship when this happened. 32 people died. The uh, started scrapping the ship uh, July 24th in Genoa in Italy. They had to uh, get the ship righted and then uh, towed to Genoa. And they finished uh, the uh, scrapping on uh, July the 7th, 2017. It took quite some time 
to get this done. I think it was a three-year process to get this ship fully scrapped. Final cost to move it, tow it, scrap it, $1.5 billion. An unbelievable amount of money. The ship cost about $450 million to build, but $1.5 billion to dispose of. And you can see some of these photos here. This is a shot here in Genoa where you can see these... Uh, these floating uh, assist, I, I forget the actual name of these boxes. There's a technical name for these boxes that helped the ship get uh, towed. But once they had her in dry dock, they uh, took all the water out of there and uh, they just went at it. And it was like a bunch of ants all over what was left of this ship. And uh, day after day, week after week, it finally got all taken apart. And what could be salvaged was salvaged and what could be recycled is recycled. And the ship is no more. Now, here's a famous ship, the, a former television star, the Pacific Princess. And there's the crew there from TV. Well, when it was all over in the last few years, this ship looked ugly. Uh, <laughs> it was uh, built in 1971 and uh, stopped sailing in 2013. It had a terrible ending. Uh, the final owners had no money to repair it properly they had a lien put against it the ship was sold for scrap in august 2013 for two and a half million euros and it was uh, finished off by the end of 2014 she was all scrapped out it used to be 554 feet long 81 feet wide and had 780 passengers and 350 crew and for almost 10 years all of america thought this is what cruise ships were all about they thought that they were 550 feet long 80 feet wide and 780 passengers. Today, you can't get on a cruise ship with a major cruise line with 780 passengers. It's changed so dramatically, as you know. Of course, uh, this week we heard about Carnival uh, scrapping ships. Um, Carnival's gone through a number of ships over the years. Here's one here that used to be a Carnival ship way, way back in probably the uh, 70s. But... Uh, Carnival used to sell them off, and uh, they would end up in the third world somewhere. They would perhaps operate as overnight ferry ships uh, in the Middle East. And uh, eventually, though, they met their end, and they would be brought into a shipyard, a wrecking, scrapping yard in India or Pakistan, and uh, they would be uh, just taken apart. And the, uh, the pieces of these ships, uh, of course, the steel would be recycled, uh, the copper wiring and uh, everything else would be all stripped out and, uh, uh, you know, would be utilized for, you know, something in the future. It's not pretty to look at, I admit. Uh, some of these photos are, they kind of make me cringe because I hate to see ships being torn apart like this, uh, but they are just mechanical units and um, they have a, a life. And um, those of us lucky enough to live in the, uh, let's say, first world, um, we're allowed to enjoy these ships for everything that they were. Uh, we were, were allowed to enjoy the fantastic meals and the entertainment and the, go to the casinos and, you know, enjoy all the amenities of the ship. Sometimes, though, these ships meet their end uh, a little early, uh, like this ship right here. They catch fire. Maybe a ship is being renovated and uh, a, torture, you know, a welder's torch uh, sets off a fire can't stop it and by the time they put the flames out the damage is so bad that uh, you know the ship has to be scrapped uh, you can't you can't save them here's the after effect of this fire on this particular vessel and it sure looks ugly um, this was the what was this one called the ocean countess and uh, yeah days are numbered and it was game over uh, just you know too many millions to repair so you might as well just scrap it but you know every once in a while a ship does escape the end and uh, here's a classic example right here the Queen Mary the original Queen Mary sitting in Long Beach California if you ever get yourself down to Los Angeles make a day of it and get down to this ship uh, you know once the virus is over with uh, visit this ship you can spend an entire day taking a self-guided tour or you can take a fully guided tour and really discover some of the really neat aspects of this vessel from the uh, back in the 30s it's an absolute time machine and uh, she was a uh, part of the second world war and part of the obviously post-war transatlantic cruising in its heyday until they had to retire her in 67 i believe 
And by 69, 1969, she was here in Long Beach. And uh, she's been a floating hotel ever since. And you can actually stay on this ship as a guest and enjoy, uh, you know, what it was like uh, in a small way back in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, and 60s. But unfortunately, uh, they all eventually have a fate. Uh, the ship right here, this carnival ship you're looking at, probably going to be scrapped, uh, not going to be saved, and not going to be sitting beside the Queen Mary going down the line. Not that iconic. Thank you for subscribing to my channel, following my videos, giving me thumbs up. So I really appreciate it. It's Bruce with Traveling with Bruce. We'll talk to you next time, everybody. Bye for now.